knowing what we know now, would you have authorized the invasion of Iraq? Uh, of, of course not. Uh, I mean, the entire predicate uh, of the war against Iraq was the intelligence that showed they had weapons of mass destruction and, and that there was a real risk they might use them. Now, I would note there was a bipartisan consensus. Both Republicans and Democrats looking at that intelligence concluded it was a real uh, We now know that intelligence was false. Mm -hmm. and, and without that predicate, there's... Uh, I guess he's going to say without that predicate, there's no reason to have gone in. Joining us now is Michael Rubin, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, senior lecturer at uh, Naval Postgraduate School and author of Dancing with the Devil, The Perils of Engaging Rogue Regimes. Uh, Michael, let me ask you, is it the right, um, the right thing to say? Uh, you know, I, I don't know, politically maybe, but uh, morally for all those sacrifices that were made in Iraq that uh, Ted Cruz and Jeb Bush for, are saying, you know, knowing what we know now, we should not have gone in. It was a mistake. Well, it doesn't seem that either Jeb Bush or Ted Cruz in this case actually know the full story. Because what all the documents which were seized from Saddam Hussein said was that while he didn't have an active weapons of mass destruction program at the time, he had every intention of reconstituting it once the sanctions collapsed and they were collapsing. So you can say, hey, we shouldn't have gone in. But that really sidesteps the issue about Saddam Hussein with his hands on weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, well, I, I, it, it is amazing that they don't say that. It's also amazing they don't talk about the injuries that some of our troops suffered uh, from uh, chemical weapons, uh, old, older chemical weapons, albeit. But nonetheless, instead they just say, oh, sure, it was a mistake. And I just think it does a disservice to all those who made sacrifices. But you're absolutely right. Um, I don't know, maybe they don't want to get that in depth and, and have to defend themselves uh, from the media. All right, let's talk about, uh, you, you wrote a great piece about how uh, Iran says they'll build five more underground nuclear plants. Look, I mean, Iran keeps pledging to destroy us, destroy Israel, build more weapons, not stop their centrifuges, you name it. And, you know, in this charade of an agreement, uh, it will go on. What amazed me, I, maybe it shouldn't if you could believe him, is what, what, what uh, the vice president uh, actually said not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, that, look, look, man, you know, if we don't have this agreement, they could break out a nuclear, eight, eight nuclear bombs in like a month. At least this way we could keep them from breaking out in a year. I, I, I don't even understand how that's a victory. Well, you know, it's sort of like the equivalent of saying, hey, it's much better to die of cancer than it is to die of a heart attack. But this whole thing is so disingenuous. I mean, what we basically have is President Hassan Rouhani of Iran whispering sweet nothings into the ear of President Obama. And like a giddy schoolgirl at the prom, Obama is convincing himself that he's not going to get screwed over, that he will have Rouhani's everlasting love and integrity, and it just ain't going to happen. No, it ain't going to happen, and he, uh, you know, you got to believe, uh, Michael, that, uh, that he knows it isn't going to happen. Doesn't he know it isn't going to happen? He doesn't care. And look, let, let's talk about how this extends to what's going on at Camp David without the participants that the president arranged this whole Gulf summit for in the first place, most notably the king of Saudi Arabia, but other Gulf nations, I think four of the six, aren't even there. Well, you know, when you, when you look at the king of Bahrain who decided to go to a horse show rather than meet with President Obama, <laughs> it, really, it really belies the point that, oh, it was just a scheduling difficulty. This is a real, a real sign of things to come. We've completely undermined our allies and they're not going to forgive us for it it's they I think they're absolutely right look the Saudis aren't any aren't angels nor are any of the other Gulf states when it comes to human rights but nor is Iran and it's a false choice to have to choose between Sunni extremists and Shia extremists which is ultimately what we're doing we should be coming down against all extremism absolutely right, let me ask you about uh, the Vatican recognition of a Palestinian state which I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm surprised, but I'm outraged. And uh, to me, this just makes it easier. This is a predicate that Barack Obama will now point to uh, when he goes to the UN and, or, or goes along with the UN in uh, declaring a Palestinian state. I, I have no doubt in my mind that that's what he's going to do. Well, you know, Steve, the lesson I take from this is that uh, agreements which the Palestinians sign don't need to last for more than 22 years. After all, the whole point of the Oslo Accords was to negotiate a solution rather than to impose unilaterally any solution through violence or other means. 
now that the Palestinians are essentially scrapping this agreement, and the Israelis would be within their right, in a way blessed by the Vatican's actions, to take whatever unilateral measures they wanted to, up to and including ending the Palestinian Authority, if that was what the Israelis deemed to be in their interest. Yeah, uh, and, and um, w what's the rationale, do you believe, behind what the Vatican did? I mean, at a time when Christians are being killed, I mean, there's no Catholics, uh, there's no Catholic community that could survive in Gaza or the West Bank. Well, ultimately, I think what the Vatican is engaging in is a great deal of appeasement. They want there to be peace, but, you know, the Vatican seems to be getting its information from the European press, and the European press has been poisonous to a man uh, when it comes to Israel, when it comes to anti-Semitism, and ultimately the Vatican is simply piling on. I don't really believe that the Pope truly understands just how unjust his actions have been. Yeah. All right, Michael, great talking to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, folks, when we come back, we're going to be joined by the Malsberg panel. But first, well, we're bringing back uh, the viewer call-in segment here on the Steve Malsberg Show. So if you want to weigh in on the issues of the day and uh, be on the air with me on this show, uh, you have to be proactive. You have to reach out to us first. And you do that by sending an email to callsteve at newsmax.com. That's Call Steve at Newsmax.com. Tell us how we could reach you during the course of the day and what you would like to talk about. And we'll have someone from our huge, massive staff of, what is it now, 753 people? Someone will get to you, and they'll say by number, hi, I'm number 2,262. Uh, Call Steve at Newsmax.com. Do it now.